avond voor de Nederlanders in, de, uh, in het publiek vanavond. We're extremely grateful um, to both Evangelina and to uh, Maurizio Croci for um, having this little conversation. The concert tonight is being broadcast live on the radio, as you'll be aware. So they really have a lot to think about and we're enormously grateful that they're joining us. First, Evangelina Mascardi, who's the Theorbo player for this evening. We're going to talk a little bit about the Theorbo later on. And Maurizio Croci, organist, harpsichordist, studied in Italy and at the Scola Cantorum in um, Baal um, and is the artistic director, among other things, of the organ festival in Fribourg. Fribourg is the um, Swiss um, partner of the European cities of historic organs, of which Alkmaar, of course, is the Dutch member. And first of all, it's just nice to say that in September, Maurizio, Maurizio has his own organ festival in Fribourg. Maybe just very quickly say something about why we should all go to Fribourg in September and the special things of the organ culture in, in Fribourg. Yeah, good evening. Of course, you are welcome. Uh, in Fribourg in September, our festival will uh, will be a very special one because it will be the f 20th festival. So uh, we will uh, have this anniversary uh, program, which is will be very uh, very rich. Uh, we will uh, start with a great concert with uh, two cantatas by Bach with uh, organ obbligato and uh, a great singer Marie Claude Chapuis. And then we will have a lot of uh, organ concerts uh, and also a, a great um, spectacle with dan modern dance and organ. And um, uh, maybe someone of you knows the, the organ uh, culture of Fribourg and the organ landscape of Fribourg. We have uh, a lot, a lot of instruments concentrated a, a little bit like in Alkmaar, in a very small town. We have instruments from the from the 17th century, two organ by Zebal Manderscheid in the cathedral in the Hôpital de Bourgeois with a, a sub, a sub semitonia, so divided keys. So you can play minton music, but in a, in a larger number of, of keys. And uh, uh, we have organs until the early 19th century. century. The, the most famous is maybe the organ of the cathedral. Uh, Consider the most famous instruments, and uh, you find uh, in, the, in the many in the literature, so many writers, many famous musicians came to Fribourg to to play on the organ, and uh, especially it's very well known the, the, the visit of Franz Liszt, who played and improvised with uh, his friend uh, Georges Sand, who uh, made a very beautiful uh, story and uh, about about this. So welcome in Fribourg. <laughs> so we're all going to, to Switzerland in September. I'm looking forward to that already. And this evening we're going to hear your ensemble Il Pegasso. Tell us a little bit about why you founded this group and what the vision of Il Pegasso is. So we founded this group uh, actually to make this program. <laughs> okay, <it's laughs> this was the, the reason. <laughs> because in Fribourg, um, uh, a friend, a musicologist, he discovered these uh, three, uh, three uh, unknown uh, un Marian Antiphon by Monteverdi, the three motets. And um, we had the opportunity to play that for the first time in the, the f in the premiere. And our organ festival supported the edition. For that reason, we, we decided to, to, to have a, a new ensemble. And uh, um, I asked her first uh, to Evangelina, which is a great tuba player, a specialist for 6th, 17th century music, and also to singers who are uh, doing um, many many Monteverdi recordings so specialists for this music and the aim of the ensemble is to play uh, this music in, in uh, as we will do tonight not with small organs but really I uh, was the case at the time so around the, 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 the instruments in the churches so that, that is uh, around the Italian organs uh, or uh, like it is uh, today we will we'll do th uh, this night around the Van Covenants. Uh, you were telling me before a very interesting story about how these new pieces of Monteverdi were, were discovered, in fact, just five or six years ago. Yes. Um, could you perhaps just, just uh, tell them a little bit about, uh, about how those pieces were, were found? So these three uh, motets were, uh, were published, af actually, after the death of Monteverdi, around uh, s uh, 1650, by Alessandro Vincenti, who was the, the, the one of, of the main publishers in Venice and uh, it was editor of other many uh, um, works of Monteverdi. 
but uh, uh, and this uh, this publication wa was known, so it is uh, reported in the catalogue of Monteverdi. But uh, as the, the front page is missing, uh, the only the only bibliographical indication we we have is a running title under the the, the score, the um, separate parts. Yeah. So the the publication is as it was usual at that time published in separate parts. So we have four. Uh, or actually, yes, four um, little books mm -hmm. for each voices, yeah. and uh, on uh, each one of these books you have uh, this running title, and uh, on the first book, so it was uh, I think the tenor, it is written Salve Regina del Signor Monteverdi. So the the man who did the catalog, made the catalog, simply took this indication and he said, okay, indeed we have four motets in this uh, publication, but the first is by Monteverdi. Uh, so he didn't took the time. He didn't take the time to examine it more carefully the, the the other booklets, and in the other booklets it is written Salve Regine of the Mo Monteverdi, so which could be which could seem a, a mistake of uh, of translation because in Latin Regine in plural is not correct with e, but in Italian it was quite common at that time to. Uh, mm, to Italianate, uh, so uh, let's say the, the, the translation, the plural. So, so Regina is in Italian is the plural of Regina, and so uh, it was for my friend uh, Luigi Collarida, the musicologist, a uh, sort of red light. So he said, okay, let's let's uh, let's in investigate more on this, and so he, he examined the other composition of this uh, of this book, and he discovered that all the four books, all the four. Uh, Motets are by Monteverdi, so there are also other reasons, so typographical and uh, also, s let's say, stylistical. And uh, so it was very interesting <coughs> this, this to discover nowadays three, three unknown motets of Monteverdi. And one of the things that's very interesting about this music is that although this is music which is based on sacred texts, in fact it's not music which is directly associated with yeah. the liturgy, for example, of the of the San Marco in Venice where Monteverdi yeah. was active. There's an another nice uh, detail about the society in Venice which, which perhaps is yes. behind this music. We know uh, from the letters <coughs> of Monteverdi that Monteverdi was a very famous musician uh, at, at that time, and especially in Venice, he was uh, the head of some, uh, the music in San Marco in Venice, so he, was, uh, he writes many times uh, that it was very, he had a lot of work, he had he received uh, many demands from, uh, from congregation, from uh, um, convents and uh, from uh, nobili, so from uh, the, the, the nobility, nobility yeah. to write uh, motets, especially motets. And uh, so at his death, uh, and uh, so these motets were not, not published at the time, uh, just manuscript. And, and uh, at that time, and at, at this death, in the Venice, the, uh, so this congregation and uh, and uh, nobilities and the convents had a lot of music, uh, manuscript music of Monteverdi. And uh, after his death, uh, Alessandro Vincenti uh, also published many of these of these motets, normally in a, in a sort of thematical publications. And many of these publications are on the theme of the of the Virgin, of so Salve Regina, or uh, Litanie della Vergine, and so on. Um, one of the distinct colours that we're going to hear this evening, we're going to hear these three male voices, and then with the, together with the Van Koeflans organ, which in itself is very special, but we're also going to hear the theorbo, and it, it strikes me, Evangelina, that perhaps not everybody here has heard a theorbo and knows what a theorbo is. Can you just tell us quickly what the, the function of this instrument is in, in this music? So, good evening, everybody. Um, well, uh, the music is written for voices or instruments and basso continuo and through bass and this group of instruments uh, is made made of several instruments of uh, organ uh, some uh, string plucked instruments like a theor the lute or cello or violone or so and then it's a question of of taste and a question of of what we have in our thoughts when we read the score to choose which instrument then is the best for accompanying this piece. Uh, 
Then the the theorbo is a lute instrument, it's a bass lute. And it was created in Italy at the beginning of the 17th century to accompany the voice, to accompany the monodia, the new style, to accompany the seconda pratica. Arte, arte. The name of the, the, the orbo in the beginning of the 17th century was also chitarrone, and the name comes from chitara, from the Greek instrument, because they wanted to re, uh, how to say, re-establish the Greek uh, declamation of the text. Then it was an instrument really invent for the new style, and it's a very representative and a very important instrument in that period, not just of course for the music but also for what it it means had a, 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 a big meaning and well we have uh, also sim similarities with the, with the organ because youth music and organ music are the first published music the first polyphony and then uh, a lot of uh, youth players and organ players they were playing together and uh, now in our days it doesn't happen we don't know how it was and we don't know how it could sound but they did it and there was a big, uh, a big communication between lute music and organ music, and that's also what we we understood to to make the, the program and to make this combination of the instruments. And um, what we're also going to hear this evening is music by Frescobaldi, and um, and this is also in fact a, a new discovery, some new sketches by Frescobaldi. Maybe it's nice first to tell something about that, but also we were we were having a very nice conversation be before our presentation about the challenges of translating um, Frescobaldi's music, in fact, to the sound of the Van Kovlen's organ. So the Van Kovlen's organ, of, of course, is also of the 16th century, but we're so much further north in Europe here, and the organ here has a very different character from the organs, for instance, of Antignati um, in the being built in the 16th century in Italy. So Maurizio has been wrestling with that that challenge of translating Frescobaldi to Van Kovlen's today. Maybe it's nice first just to say something about how the, the Frescobaldi uh, new pieces were discovered. Yes, it, these pieces were discovered almost at the same time uh, of the Monteverdi pieces and also by a uh, Swiss musicologist. So it's uh, uh, two Swiss discoveries, uh, Christian Janeret, and uh, it, it was discovered in the Bibliothèque Nationale de Paris and it is, uh, these pieces are in a, in a very small uh, booklet, a sort of notebook, sketchbook, and uh, it is, I think, the only, only one autograph by Frescobaldi that we know. And it's very interesting that th th these, are real, these, these are real sketches, so Frescobaldi <laughs> doesn't take care to, to, um, to, 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 to make this music, uh, to write his music as, uh, as he, he, d he does in the... In the in his uh, publication of it. of Toccata, of Capricci, Frescobaldi was, pretends to be also a cultivated musician. So he wrote with very complicated uh, proportion and, uh, and so on. And uh, for instance, uh, the problem of the triples uh, in Frescobaldi, each organist knows about how, how difficult it is to interpret it. But when, when you look in this booklet, all the triples are simply uh, marked with three. So. All, all the triples are written in the same way, tripla vulgaris. And um, of course there are sketches, so the, the music is not so perfect and uh, the structure is not so perfect as uh, the music published by Frescobaldi, but you can find uh, um, some um, concordance, concordance similarities, similarities yeah. to, to published music and also of course you can recognize the style. They are very short pieces, uh, mainly dance pieces, so it could be, uh, it could seem a little bit strange to put this music with together with Monteverdi, uh, sacred music. But uh, we know that in the academy, so in the circles of uh, intellectuals in Venice, it was very common to have uh, 
some evenings, so people uh, as, as this evening were together, they listened to, to music, not For six only hours. <laughs> <laughs> not only not only secular music, but no. also to these motets that Monteverdi composed uh, for, for this, uh, this academy, and uh, at the same time, uh, harpsichordists could play some dances or Jobbies mm. could play. Yeah. So they don't have this uh, separation of, of uh, genres that we have a little bit today. Yes. So they could mix very easily. So the idea was to put it together and to use in the, in the concert, you will listen to it as a sort of interlude on the in or intonation to the Monteverdi pieces. Could you just very finally just say something about about the experience of performing Frescobaldi and mm. in Alkmaar on the Van Koflen's organ? <laughs> ah, it's a great great experience because the instrument is fantastic, but of course it's not so easy because uh, it's very different from an Italian instrument. So the the touch is much harder, and uh, of course the sound is different, the compass is different because the Italian organ since the very beginning had a, a very a very big compass. So. Minimum from C to A, but normally we had also the, a contra octave or a contra fifth. Or we, if you take the big instrument in Sapertonia, we had two octaves lower. So really a piano keyboard. <laughs> and on the vocabulary, you have only from F to A. So you, d you miss the first octave, so you are ready to make uh, many arrangements. And but the so the main challenge is to find. Um, uh, so a character for the pieces, which is a little bit similar to, to the character you would, would have done on the Italian organs. But I, I must say that it's not so difficult because when, when an instrument is so, so well done, when each, uh, each um, stop is so well voiced, it has uh, such a great personality, individual personality, I mean, it's, it's not difficult to find uh, solutions. <laughs> We're very grateful indeed to Maurizio and to Evangelina for, for joining us uh, before such a, a concert this evening. And I'm just going to do a little bit of promotion for them because um, they have made a CD of the, the new Monteverdi and newly discovered Frescobaldi um, pieces. The CD will be for sale, I believe, in the concert this evening. So if you do enjoy what you hear this evening, do please support the wonderful musicians and, and, and do take the CD uh, home with you. Um, a big round of applause, please, for Maurizio, Maurizio Croce and Evangelina Mascardi.